Well, our scripture lesson this morning is a familiar one, John 3, 16 and 17. If you would uh, take out your scriptures or your outlines or note it on the overhead uh, projector there, I'd like for us to read these verses out loud together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God, but that the world through him might be saved. Say amen, church. I don't know about you, but I did not wake up this morning wondering if God loved me. <laughs> it wasn't a doubt in my mind when I woke up that God loved me. Not everybody has confidence. Not everybody knows that God loves them. But here's what I want us all to know this morning. 1 John 4, 16 says, We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in Him. God is love. Do you believe that? God is love. And all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. You know, it makes you wonder, why, like the man I met last week, why, why do people rest, even wrestle with the thought that, that there's a God in heaven or there's a God in heaven that, that loves them? Why, I wonder why people hold at arm's length a God that so desperately loves them that, as John 3, 16 says, gave his only begotten son to die for them. Uh, what is it that keeps people from, from knowing and experiencing the love of God. And the only answer that I can come up with is fear. They're just, a, they're just afraid. Uh, here's a couple of examples of why people are afraid uh, and, and don't know that God loves them. One fear that people have is that if I get close to God and I let Him love me, then <laughs> the fun's over. I'll have to give up all, all my fun. The party's over. If I let God love me and I start living for Him. Now that's, that's a sad commentary on us as Christians. <laughs> Facts. Uh, Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Paul says to young Timothy in his ministry, he says, Command those who are rich in the things of this life not to be proud, but to place their hope not in such an uncertain thing as riches, but in God, watch this, who does what? generously gives us everything for our enjoyment. Christians ought to be enjoying life. We should not be giving people a reason to, 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 to doubt that. Uh, well, number two, I've got to hasten. Another fear that people have is if I let God love me and I start living for him, then I'm, I'm going to lose my freedom. <laughs> Jesus tells us the facts in John 8. He says, I tell you, most solemnly that anyone who chooses a life of sin is trapped in a dead-end life and is, in fact, a slave. There's no freedom. There's no freedom in a life of sin. Oh, Willie Nelson sung about it over there. <laughs> if the sun sets you free, watch this, you, you are free through and through. Here's another fear. If I let God love me and I start living for him, then I might become a fanatic <laughs> well, what's the fact? Jesus tells us in John 10, 10, a thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I came so that they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out all fear. There, then there's this wonderful prayer that the apostle Paul prays for for the church at Ephesus. Look at this prayer. He says, I pray that Christ will be more and more. This is my prayer for you today. That Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts as you trust in him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love really is. But did you see? Did you see the four dimensions of God's love? First of all, 
God's love is wide. His love is wide enough to, to include everyone. For God so loved the world. Psalm 145, 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. Second, the second dimension of God's love is not only wide, but it's long. It's long. God tells his people in Jeremiah 31.3, he says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. His love, aren't you glad for this? His love isn't flaky. <laughs> his love isn't fickle. Did you see the third dimension? God's love, it's high. <laughs> Paul writes in Romans, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from his love. Amen. Death can and life can't. The angels can't and the demons can't. Our, our fears for today, our worries about tomorrow, and even the powers of hell can't keep God's love away. Say amen. Whether we are high above the sky or in the deepest ocean, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ain't no mountain high enough. <laughs> Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river deep enough. I just went Diana Ross on you. <laughs> the Bible says that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. You can't get away from it. You can't escape it. He loves you. He loves you. It's unconditional. He loves you when you're good. He loves you when you're bad. He loves you when you're clean shaven. He loves you if you have a duck dynasty beard. He loves you if you're fit as a fiddle. He loves you if you're shaped like a cello. Amen. That's the love of God. That's the love of God. Finally, God's love is deep. It's deep. It isn't shallow. When you're at, and when you're at your lowest, aren't you glad that the love of God goes deeper still and God's love just gets underneath all those hurts and pains and those, those deepest needs and he, and he undergirds you with his love? The psalmist experienced that in a, in a moment of desperation. He wrote in Psalm 40, verse 11, My only hope. Boy, I'm just preaching your song there, Willie. <laughs> My only hope is in your love. Otherwise I perish, the psalmist said, for, for problems far too big for me to solve are piled higher than my head. Maybe you came to church this morning feeling like the burdens of life is just piled high. I want you to know something this morning, brother and sister. The love of God just goes deep right underneath all of that. And he's going to keep you. He's going to keep you. Now, since God loves us, look at the responsibility that he's given each of us. John 13, verse 34. Jesus says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. 